Hello children, this is chapter 8 of history, the first empire part 2. In our previous part, we have studied about the first empire of India, the Mauryan Empire, which was founded by Chandragupta Maurya under the able guidance of Chanakya or Kautilya. After Chandragupta Maurya, his son Bindusara ascended the Mauryan throne and after Bindusara, he was succeeded by Ashoka, Ashoka the Great. Ashoka is called Ashoka the Great because under Ashoka, the Mauryan Empire reached to its peak. Ashoka was the son of Bindusara and the grandson of Chandragupta Maurya. He ruled over the Magadha Empire from 273 BC to 232 BC. Kalinga war, his first major war, as a king conquests the kingdom of Kalinga. Kalinga is the ancient name of coastal Odisha. Kalinga was a powerful kingdom in the reference of trade and agriculture. That's why every ruler wanted to conquer or capture Kalinga. Ashoka invaded Kalinga in 261 BC. Except the region of extreme south, the whole Indian subcontinent was under the rule of Ashoka. The War of Kalinga The War of Kalinga was the major turning point in the life of Ashoka. Children, as I have told you that Ashoka fought only one major war during his reign and that war was Kalinga. So after the Kalinga War, he saw and was shocked to see the death and destruction caused by the war. Ashoka saw thousands of soldiers had died in the war and many were wounded and were become handicapped. This made Ashoka sad and very unhappy. The war of Kalinga changed Ashoka once and forever. He left the path of war and all forms of violence. Ashoka became the follower of Buddhism and adopted the path of Ahinsa, Love and Dhamma. Ashoka replaced Digvijay or the policy of conquest with Dharmvijay or the victory of Dharma. Which means that Ashoka gave a physical war and adopted the policy of cultural war. This was the policy of peace and welfare which is known as Dhamma. Dhamma is a Prakrit word which means Dharma in Sanskrit. Dhamma was not based on any one particular religion. It was a code of conduct promoting social and moral values. Ashoka advised people to respect their elders and to practice non-violence. So here children, we have three new terminologies. Number one, Digvijay. What is the meaning of Digvijay? Policy of conquest through war. The second is Dharma Vijay. What is the meaning of Dharma Vijay? Conquest through Dharma or war through culture or Dharam. And the third is Dhamma. Dhamma was the policy of peace and welfare which was adopted by Ashoka. So Ashoka gave up the policy of Dig Vijay and replaced this policy with Dharm Vijay by adopting Dhamma. Welfare Measures of Ashoka Ashoka believed that a king is a father of his kingdom and he should look upon its subject as a father treats its children. Ashoka carried out lots of welfare activities in his kingdom such as he built roads, dug wells, planted trees and built rest houses for travellers. He arranged for medical treatment for both human beings and animals. Ashoka's Edicts The principle of Dhamma were inscribed on the pillars and rocks. These rocks and pillars on which Dhamma are inscripted are known as Ashoka's Edicts. 
Ashoka's rock edicts and pillar inscriptions show the significance of dharma. The main principle of dharma were written on these edicts which are such as ahimsa, non-violence or non-injury to all living things, respect for elders, respect and tolerance to all religions, obedience to parents and teachers, truthfulness, kindness to all including slaves and servants, charity towards the poor, peace and harmony among all. Ashoka emphasized on pure and simple life. The edicts were written mostly in Prakrit language and have been placed in different parts of the empire so that people might read them. These edicts have been found in India, Pakistan, Afghanistan and in Nepal. Spread of Dhamma To spread his Dhamma, Ashoka appointed officials called Dham Mahatmas. They were appointed to explain about Dhamma to the people and to supervise the moral life of the people and to assure whether the people are reading the principles of Dhamma or not. Ashoka had friendly relations with his neighbors. He sent and received an envoy to and from them. He sent Buddhist monk to Burma and other Southeast Asian countries. He also sent his son Mahindra and daughter Sangamitra to Sri Lanka on a Buddhist mission. He also propagated Buddhism in Chola and Pandya's kingdom. The following symbols are the edicts of Ashoka which are inscribed on some rocks and pillars during the reign of Ashoka. This is a symbol of our national emblem. The national emblem of India has been taken from the Ashokan pillar which is situated at Sarnath. The wheel, which represents kingship and early rule, feature on the Indian flag. The great stupa at Sachi near Bhopal is also constructed by Ashoka in the 3rd century BC. Ashoka conducted the 3rd Buddhist council in 250 BC at Patliputra to spread Buddhism. Decline of Mauryan Empire After the death of Emperor Ashoka, the Mauryan Empire collapsed within five decades. The last ruler of Mauryan Empire was Brihadrat. The Mauryan Empire was finally destroyed by Pushyamitra Sunga in 185 BC. He was a Brahmin general of the last Mauryan king named Brihadrat. Pushyamitra Sunga killed Brihadrat in public and this ended the rule of Mauryan over Magadh and started the Sunga's dynasty rule. There are many reasons given by historians of the decline of the Mauryan dynasty. Ashoka's policy of non-violence and ahimsa made Mauryan army inactive. Vastness of the empire, foreign invasions, weak successors of Ashoka. The successors were always fighting among themselves and were disunited.